Denise Wingate, costume designer for Daisy Jones and the Six. I know you're a huge fan of the book and you really wanted to work on the show. So what was it about the book that spoke to you? Just for some reason, I just really loved the book. I just got taken with the story and I love that era. I love the period. And I, I sat, I was uh, shooting in New Orleans and there was a hurricane. So we were, we were on lockdown in our hotels and I read it in one sitting. And um, the producer, Mike Nelson, sent it to me. He said, I think you'll really love this. Read it and tell me what you think. And I put the book down and said, you got to get me in the room. I love this so much. I really want to do it. It felt like something that was perfect for me being born and raised in LA. I had styled with a band and been on the road. So it just felt very natural to me. It just felt like the perfect project I could, I could get creative with. Mm -hmm. So while you were reading it, were you already coming with ideas and like jotting down designs and notes of like how the first time the first time I read it, I just read it all the way through, just, just as, a, as a reader. And then when I realized I had some time in New Orleans on this other film, I started putting images together. And because the book read like a documentary, um, I really wanted it to look realistic. So I started watching documentaries and gathering uh, images and watching footage from, you know, from concerts of that period. So I created a book, a visual book based on the book and made my own giant visual portfolio. And that's what I took in for my very first, uh, first meeting with Hello Sunshine. And I think that they were blown away that I did so much. They, they, I mean, they couldn't believe it. The whole movie was there in this book. So how much from, from that book um, wound up on the show? Like how many of those designs and... Uh, I, Taylor Jenkins read was very, very uh, descriptive in a lot of scenes. And I felt that the fans were expecting certain things. And for those of you who haven't read the book or seen the show, there, there are specific outfits that she describes. And I felt that if we didn't do that, the fans would really, really be let down. And I just, for me, I just didn't want to let anybody down. I know I would be expecting it. So I, those specific items I, we work with, but then the, the actors all brought in their own, their own characters to the show, which was great. So we could, we could build different characters. Um, yeah, cause she, she describes the, the oversized men's shirt. That yeah, I mean, that was something that she described. Do it. Was, yeah, <laughs> we had to do it because it was, it was in the script, there's dialogue surrounding it and we just had to do it. And the same thing, there's a beautiful, it says in the book, uh, an ornately beaded Halston caftan that she goes in the water with and at the Chateau Marmont, which we had to build three of these intricately hand beaded, beautiful caftans to, to go in the water. So that's stuff like that. Go ahead. Riley was very, very uh, collaborative and I, all the actors were actually, I had done all the research for them. So by the time they came to see me, a lot like what LJ was saying I had done all the research I had boards and boards of who I thought their characters were so it gave them a, a, a jumping point and they could say I really like this I like this let's try this so I felt like I had just done so much research so it, I think it was helpful. Mm -hmm. Did you um, have like real life artists in mind for each of them like obviously Daisy like the avatars you know like Stevie Nicks and we really see that in the finale of that gorgeous gold like flowy caftan <laughs> dress. Yeah and that was her actually I mean it, it, early because it spans a, um, it spans quite a bit of time and the actors play themselves young so we really had to so we had to make them look young with you know the clothing and the hair and makeup so when Daisy was young I did I really was drawn to young Linda Ronstadt when she was real, cause she was really young and she was just a powerhouse, but she was always wearing these short shorts and cowboy boots and she was awesome. And watching footage of her in interviews, she was really amazing. And then she morphed into more of a Stevie Nicks. Um, but she's the one for that final scene. We were trying to figure out what would really stand out. And she called me one day and said, Gold Dust Woman, I'm listening to Gold Dust Woman. Let's do something like that. So once we had that idea, then we could find the perfect outfit. It took a while. We tried many different versions, but that was a Halston, a, you know, gold lame caftan that we cut down the middle and made into a cape. It was pretty fabulous. Mm -hmm. And then for, love, for, mm -hmm. for, for Suki, who plays Karen, we did a lot of Joan Jett, uh, Patty Smith. Susie Quattro so it was a little more glam a little more yeah glam. and, and uh, she also feel it feels like tougher because she's the only girl in a band for a while until Daisy comes along too 
Yeah, and in, in the book, she's she's a little more androgynous. We we played with that, and you, I used a lot of uh, Mark Bolin from T Rex, a little more of a glam androgynous look. So much fun. Mm-hmm. Um, I love Daisy's coats. She has a lot of great coats, um, some fur collars, um, and then obviously the the fur coat on the album cover. So where did you source all of those coats? I, where didn't I source? I sourced everywhere. I mean, I bought that one coat that she wears in the end. I bought online from a store in Paris. And I just, I, I mean, we rented some, and Pal's Costumes had some amazing coats. Um, I looked, I went to flea markets every single weekend for a year, every Saturday, every Sunday, the vendors knew me. They didn't know what I was doing because I don't think it was on anybody's radar. They didn't care, but they knew I was looking for specific seventies things. So every weekend I would see what they had. Um, I made some beautiful coats. Uh, I think people may have read in the press before I found this woman who had made jumpsuits for Elvis, who is Riley's grandfather. And she made two, and she made beautiful rock and roll clothes in the seventies. And she was still around in San Francisco. So she made two beautiful coats for me. I had her custom make those. So I, I just, I, again, I had the time because of COVID to really, really source beautiful things. And I don't think we intentionally we're thinking about using so many coats, but I just kept finding so many fabulous ones and they're good for like a quick pop getting off the tour bus. They're just so dramatic and fabulous. And then we figured it was like armor for her that she could be wearing these big coats and protect herself emotionally. Yeah, for sure. Well, well, when she goes to Greece, it's a completely different style. A lot, a lot, still like a lot of flowing dresses and caftans. So what was it like designing those looks? For that um that was amazing that was I mean because it was such a different we'd been on the show for two years at that point and it was such a departure for her and it was at the end of the show and I found some beautiful pieces I made I actually ended up well I ended up breaking my ankle in Greece in my costume shop so I had to finish the show in a wheelchair but besides that it was really difficult I had to get to set on a mule um but I had a really really great seamstress there uh she was from Poland and she was amazing and she was just I would find these beautiful fabrics and she was just making stuff left and right. It was fantastic because I didn't really have a proper workshop because of COVID. I had a seamstress who I love who made some beautiful pieces for me. Um, I mean, she was making pieces all the time, but she wasn't even allowed in the fitting room and she we didn't have a workshop. So I would I would send her things and have to to send fabric. It was really difficult. That part was difficult. Um, and I wish I would have had a proper workshop. We could have been making stuff, you know, nonstop. Mm-hmm. But and she, like you hadn't broken your foot either. So that, that was, was that. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, and I was like, I'm finishing this show. It's been two years. I don't care if I have to limp across the finish line. Yeah. Um, so that made it difficult, but it, it was beautiful, like mm-hmm. beautiful to shoot there. Yeah. Well, like you were saying, you know, there's like, the show is set in so many time periods. You have 60s Pittsburgh, 70s LA, and then obviously the documentaries in the 90s. So how did you want to show their evolving style through every period especially in in the doc because we don't really see a lot of their outfits especially um you know the final shot with like daisy answering the door we don't see like their full outfit so how do you want to still show you know they're older now but there's still like a little piece of what you've seen before all right and my whole goal was not to have the costumes be noticed at all mm-hmm. because of that because you you don't really want to say too much with the costumes and I didn't want it to be it want it to be distracting because you really need to focus on the words and what they're saying and that fun there's no words at the end of the movie you just want it to be her face and the emotion on her face so for me anything we could do to keep a blank canvas and make it disappear I think you know the best the best costumes are the ones you don't really notice um, unless it's you're specifically doing that for a reason but I, I like for things to all blend in and you know we had an amazing amazing team amazing cinematographers amazing production designers it was just and I think it really felt cohesive all the colors and the palettes and the, it just it felt very real to me yeah I do like that she was in white uh, at the end because it feels like you know they're they're starting anew again you know it's like a blank slate <laughs> Oh, I like that. Okay, that's good. I just because she wears so much color, she's so bold, she does, and so yeah. crazy throughout the whole show. I think that that was exactly it, just to have. And the, the same reason why we use gold at the end of the the concert it was kind of like the phoenix rising. So there's a lot of symbolic, you know, pieces that maybe nobody will notice, but obviously you notice. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of my favorite touches um, are Timothy Oliphant's scarves. So how did that come about? <laughs> Uh, well, first of all, Tim, I've worked with Tim before and Tim is hilarious and um, he could really rock that whole 70s look and he was he's super thin. He's got a great body. He was wearing the really tight pants and the 
boots and the big belt buckles. And he just, um, he's just such a joy. I have to say all of the actors were a joy, but he, he was hilarious. So he, he would do anything. He had some flair. So mm -hmm. it was great. For sure. Um, well, lastly, what is your favorite Daisy Jones song? Ooh, you, you know, we listened to all the songs and we, I probably the river, but we, we would just listen to him. And, and by the end, we heard him so much. We were all just singing. Everybody knew the lyrics. The whole cast was singing. I mean, the whole crew, everybody, the grips, electric, everybody knew the words. So it, uh, I, I love the soundtrack. Um, I went to a restaurant the other day and they were, they were, they, they were, were playing, playing it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I was like, okay. That's good. And all, and I have to say the, the all of the actors are singing and playing their own instruments and they did it live. So they they, they need to, to get the tour off the ground already. So, I know, wow. I know. Hey, okay. make a make a call, make that happen. Yeah. Uh, well, Denise, it was great speaking with you. Thanks so much for your time, and we'll see you back here in a little bit. Thank you so much. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you.